my friends. It's Amanda May with Ardith Design and I'm here to talk about counted cross stitch this week. It's my ninth video. I'm so excited to be here when we talk about con counted cross stitch and all things needle art. And I am trying to be the thread that helps to connect historical needlework to modern needle art. So let's get started. I am really excited today. I've got some questions and answers. So we're gonna do Q&A first, then we're gonna do Save the Stitches, and I have some really exciting things to show you that I found, really eclectic things. After Save the Stitches, I'm gonna show you the current things that I'm working on, my works in progress, my whips, and then, <laughs> I don't know why I try to be sassy pants. Anywho, I'm gonna show you my works in progress, and then we're gonna do library books and then the giveaway winner and then talk about upcoming stuff for this week. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna do questions and answers first and I took my glasses off. It is so warm and humid. I'm wearing my glasses and they're literally fogging up and then you can't see my eyes on camera. So I'm, it's kind of blurry right now, but I'd rather you see my eyes then see fog over my glasses. So here we go. Question. Question number one that I had from a viewer is, what is cardstock, Amanda? And you call for cardstock on your thread drop printables. So what, what, what's cardstock? Well, that's such an excellent question and I apologize for not being clear about what cardstock is. Basically, it's a thicker weight paper than normal copy paper. So if you go to your local office supply store or big box store, you can usually get your just regular copy paper. This is basic copy paper. And it shows you the weight of it and the brightness of it. Usually it can vary. Um, there's bright, bright white, not so bright white, and not as thick paper, not as thin paper. So there's different weights. This is standard copier paper here. I got this at a big box store. It's on reserve for when I run out of printer paper. I just open that pack up and go right at it. Now, cardstock is usually you can find it in the same section as you would find your printer paper, and it's got a higher weight. I apologize, I got excited and like ripped this out so you can't see the packaging as well. But this weight is a 110 weight that I've used. It's the same size paper and it's just thicker. So I wanted to show you here as an example. This is my one of my printables. It's on thin paper. Woo, 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 woo. And here it is on cardstock. It's just, it's a thicker, it's a heavier, it's a denser paper. So I hope that answers the question um, as far as cardstock goes. And yes, the printables are on printed on cardstock, and it just makes it I don't know, nicer. There's so many different weights of paper. I'm using 110 weight, if that helps. All right, next question is, how do you organize your collection at home? <laughs> well, I assume they mean uh, my finished collection. And those are arranged by size or season or both. And I would love to do a video in future episodes where I show you how I organize my completed needle art collection. I will say to, to start out with, you wanna have an acid-free tissue paper, uh, a tissue paper that doesn't have any coloring on it, so a white tissue paper. And I use bubble wrap on some occasions, but for long-term storage, bubble wrap isn't, isn't good. <laughs> but I will say you wanna have acid-free white tissue paper to wrap your piece and then you wanna also have, uh, potentially, depending on how depth, in depth your collection is, you also wanna have unbleached raw muslin to help wrap your needle art. And I, I, I definitely wanna do a video and talk about storing in the home affordably and also how to store safely. All right, the next question I have is, Amanda, why does your free pattern not say free on your store? Why does it say zero with a plus? That is a great question. All right, last week I de debuted my I Love You pattern and I put it up for free in my store. 
but I got one download. Only one person went and got the free pattern. And I realized that it might have been confusing for some people. So I want to explain that the platform that I'm using is really awesome for artists. It allows you to have a free section or a pay a pay what you're comfortable with section. Basically what that means is this is zero plus. If you want to go and get the free pattern, all you do is click on it and then put zero in, meaning free and you'll be able to download the pattern. But say you don't feel comfortable getting something for free. And a lot of people don't. They're like, well, what, what's the catch? I don't feel comfortable. You put your time, your effort or whatever. So the idea is that it pay what you're comfortable with. So I don't get charged any transaction fees for a zero, meaning if you take the pattern for free, I don't get charged any transaction fees. But say in the future, if I put up patterns for pay, pay the value that you feel comfortable paying for. And in some websites it's called like buy the artist a cup of coffee equivalent or buy, buy the artist lunch, how, however metric you feel comfortable with. Um, basically, as soon as a dollar amount or a, a value is put in, then yes, I do get some of that money uh, minus the transaction fees. So it's, it's really cool in that say you're not comfortable taking the free pattern and you want to send me a couple dollars or send me a lot of dollars. I'm not going to object to that. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's really neat for, for artists. And I'm sorry if there was any confusion, if I didn't explain that well. So if you want something free on my store and it says zero plus, you just enter the zero and then you'll get it for free. All right. <laughs> All right, and my next question is, will you be releasing any Christmas patterns? And yes, yes, I will. I'm so excited. I have a couple really fun little designs, and they're mid-century inspired designs, and will be like four by four ornaments. Mm. Excuse me, I have a cold, and I'm trying so hard. I'm sorry if I sound congested, but I really wanted to do this video today, so I apologize if I'm going to be drinking a lot. It's sparkling water, nothing, uh, nothing spiked. But I, I'm going to be releasing some Christmas patterns. I'm really excited about them. I charted them with Fancy Floss, but I have the DMC equivalent. And the only thing stopping me from showing you them today is I got sick and my finishing party got put on hold. Everything's still on my ironing board. <laughs> so I'm hoping to show you my Christmas patterns, holiday patterns soon. All right, that's, that's it for my question and answers. Thank you so much, everyone, for asking questions. I hope that I answered them. And uh, let's move on to Save the Stitches. This week was so fun. Well, last week was so fun. After my video, I did go and do a little treasure hunting. And I did not find any cross stitch this week, but I did find some really awesome little needle art. So the first one is this little chicken, this little crochet chicken. I thought it was so fun, a little pom-pom. I'm not sure what it's for. I wanna say it. you put it on the top of a doll's head. I don't know, but it's so cute. I had to have it. <laughs> The next thing, I got a pair of these crochet pieces, and they've got the circular rings. I'm, I'm not sure what this is called, but I've been, on my Pinterest, I have a bunch of button collection stuff for, door, I'm like making dorset buttons and dead drop buttons, but I'm not sure what this stitching is called here, but I think this is really neat. I'm not sure what you use these for. <laughs> And the ladies asked me, what are you going to do with that, Amanda? I said, I'm going to keep them because I like them. All right. Oh, I lied to you. I did find something cross-stitch related. Mm. I collect vintage aprons and I collect contemporary aprons too. I love aprons. I wear them all the time. I've worn aprons since I was an adolescent. I love them. So I got this one and it it has the cross stitching on it it's on cotton and 
I'll show, try to show you the stitching here. Isn't that fun? I like how they used the gingham as the, the checkerboard pattern to put in the crosses. And the color, I thought it was so fun since it's harvest time. I thought it was so fun to find this apron. Yay, and I love the little pocket. So I got an apron. So I did find something cross stitch this week. All right, I got this piece a couple weeks ago and I didn't show it last week because I was cleaning it. And the lady I purchased it from, she didn't have a backstory on it other than to say, I'm sorry, it, it's, it's dirty and I tried to clean it and will you give me $5 for it? And I said, yes, yes, I will give you $5 for it and I will do my best to clean it. So here it is, it is a quilt. It's a red work quilt. I cleaned it successfully. It is all machine stitched, but I absolutely love it. At first, when I when I saw it from afar, I got really excited. Like, I thought, like I tried not to yippee, like go, ah! I tried not to do that, right? I'm trying to be like, like really cool. <laughs> It was folded up and it's got all of these fun little prints. Now, these all look like they're machine embroidered. They're still absolutely awesome. I'm not disputing that, but from afar, I thought that this was all hand stitch red work. Anywho, I'm gonna take a picture of this and put it on my blog so you can see it a little bit better. All right, the last piece that I found, I have not opened it yet. I bought it, sight unseen. I decided to take a gamble. And my rationale was <laughs> that I'll open it during my YouTube show and it'll totally be worth it. That's why I bought it. So I got this. It's a Save the Stitches. It is wrapped in... Uh, wax paper. I don't know what's inside. I haven't opened it. It's got masking tape around it. And it says on here that it's um, antique chair arms and the back. So I washed my hands. I'm on a clean surface. I have clean scissors and we're going to open this up and see what's here. I apologize for the crackling noise, but I'm really excited. I wanted, I was thinking all week on how I'm going to film opening this to show everyone. And I wanted to do like a, like a, I'm not there yet with my videoing skills. So we're going to do it together and then I'll hold it up if, if it's not too damaged. And then if it is too damaged, I'll take pictures and put it, put it in. Okay. I'm going to stop talking. I'm really excited. <laughs> Here we go. All right, I I snipped the the masking. Okay. All right, I'm trying to get. All right, I'm gonna use the scissors. Here we go. All right, here we go. Ooh. Okay. Oh, okay, so one piece just came down. Nice. Look at that. Wow. That's really nice. Okay, and then here we go. Wow, okay, so there's one piece. Two piece, I see it's a little yellowed three piece. Okay. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Now this has got staining. I see. Seven. Eight. Oh, there's more. Look. Ah. How cool is that? 
that is so cool. I, I don't know anything about the pattern. I don't know anything about this. It, like I said, it was written antique chair back and arms. If anybody knows and wants to share, tell me down below in the comments what, what this is so I can do some research. I, I love this, the, the work. It's gorgeous. I'm not sure the style or the era. If anyone knows the type of chair that is put on, I would love to know. Like this chair back here that I have, it's got a, a boiled wool uh, crocheted blanket on it right now, but underneath it is a historic uh, needlepoint rocker from the late uh, 1900s. And one of the videos, I'm going to show you how we vacuum. <sighs> So we're going to use the chair to vacuum. Uh, vacuuming needle art is super important because dust uh, attracts moisture, which attracts dirt and debris and dust. So it, it, so it clings to it and causes staining and age. And it, it's um, like a slippery slope. If you, have, if you have a piece of fiber art that's dusty, it attracts dust and moisture, which then attracts more dust and more moisture, which then stains it and deteriorates it further, combined with light and all the other environmental factors. So, anywho, this chair, I have a, a an antique rocker back here, and uh, uh, Bordello embroidered, and then my colonial knots. Anyway, I got a lot of goodies here. Um, so one of the videos we are going to do a vacuuming video. I love to vacuum. After watching Donna Ray's video on ironing, I now have a newfound appreciation for ironing. So I'm just going to clean and restore all the things. <laughs> awesome. That's that's my Save the Stitches this week. Again, I am so excited for everything that I found. And I love treasure hunting. If anything that you see that you're like, Amanda, you... You researched that wrong, that's not that, or, oh, I know exactly what it is. Always feel free to comment below or message me. I believe in being a lifelong learner. I do not have all the answers, and I I love learning about needlework. So, well, let's move on to after, now we did save the stitches, so let's move on to my works in progress. Works in progress. The first thing I want to show you is my pumpkin pie sampler that I started working on. I debate, uh, debuted this pattern a couple weeks ago, and it's the not quite awake lady ready to have her pumpkin spice coffee, eat some pumpkin pie, put her pumpkin spice in her coffee, all things pumpkins, all things spice, everything nice. <laughs> what is it? Harvest kisses and pumpkin wishes. <laughs> so here we go. Here's where I am so far. She does not have a head. <laughs> I started doing the cup, obviously the French press. I started working on her skirt. And I've already, this is a digital rendering of my pattern, and I've already decided to add in back stitching on her, sh on her bodice. As you see here, so I am gonna update the pattern accordingly to show that I added back stitching. And here I charted for the 720, which is the deep, deep pumpkin orange that her skirt is outlined in. And here I used uh, the Fragrant Clove fl Fancy Floss. And up here, these are coffee berries that grow on the coffee plant. And when they're ripe, they're like a deep red. And then when they're obviously not ripe, they're <laughs> yellow and green. So these are coffee berries up top. So coffee, pie, pumpkin spice. <laughs> All right. The next pattern that I'm working on. I, I left it on the same fabric as my I love you pattern that I showed last week, my 143. And this is the morning quilt, morning M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And it is supposed to look wonky. <laughs> it is charted all in DMC. I used a variegated brown 4140. I used my 310, my 3799, my deep purple, and I I really like it. It was a pleasure to stitch. It is uh, going through you know grief my grief process 
this is not stitched the same as my pattern and the pattern that I developed myself and that's okay. And I think it's a testament to the being perfectly imperfect. I'm very happy with it looking wonky. <laughs> I don't know if I should chart it now, if I should go back and rechart, or if I should just show that here, here, here's what it's supposed to look like and here's how it does look. We'll see. I'm not perfect. I'm still a new stitcher and I'm learning. <laughs> Alrighty, so those are the two works in progress that I can show you that I have done. Again, I'm hoping to show some of my Christmas patterns and a couple other things that I'm working on. And I've got something really exciting coming. It's an awesome pattern. I've already talked to a couple floss tubers about the pattern and I'm waiting on the fancy flosses to be sent to me. They, I have two custom colors that go with the pattern. I can't decide if I should do a pre-order or just give you all a release date, but I have a really exciting pattern coming out inspired by um, Pam and Steph and, from Just Keep Stitching. And what's funny is it's a pattern, mm, how do I say it? It's an art piece that I actually did last year. I drew it. I, and it's a digital art piece that I did last year and then Steph said something in one of her videos that matched perfectly to my digital drawing. So I got so excited that I immediately went, pulled out my artwork because I've never released it, the art. A lot of stuff that I do, I, I it stays hidden for whatever reason. <laughs> so I pulled it out and I charted it on my design program on my on my desktop and I did all the calculations the thread calculations did all that good stuff and I worked with Nancy Turner from the Victorian model sampler shop and she dyed custom colors for this chart I am so excited there's two custom colors and then the rest will be charted in DMC so you'll have two fancy flosses that you'll need to purchase and then the rest is DMC and then the pattern. And I'm probably going to include a, uh, a picture or I don't know what. Would you all like to have um, an art print, a signed art print along with the pattern or I don't know. I'm, all, I'm so new to this, but I'm, I'm really excited. I, I can't show it to you all yet but it's a really cute little pattern and I'm really excited for doing another collaboration with a wonderful artist in the needlework industry and I'm hoping to share it all with you soon. Let me know uh, down below again if, if having a signed art print along with the pattern is something you all would be interested in. I don't know that just came spontaneously came I swear I'm epiphany the floss tube epiphany. <laughs> Okay. Thank you all for listening. I'm going to, oh, we're going to do uh, library books and then we're going to do uh, the giveaway winner and then, and then we'll be all done for the week. All right. Library books. These are really fun. I've been perusing these books for a couple weeks and they're due back. And so I thought I better talk about them now or I'll never talk about them. All right. The first one is a cookbook and craft book. And it is the Swedish Christmas table. And I've really enjoyed looking at this and planning for the upcoming holiday season. It says Yuletide is a time of delicious smells wafting through the halls. Onions sizzling on the stove, a wood fire gently smoldering in the grate, and fresh baked gingerbread ready to hang on the tree. It's a time of tradition and recipes handed down from one year to the next. The Swedish Christmas table is a festive homage to the international history of the month of snow and mulled wine, advent calendars, and gathering family. I think I'm going to renew that book. I have <laughs> everything in the book looks so nice. All right, the next one is 
put a bird on it, The Artful Bird. I have absolutely found this book to be so delightful. Look at that owl. I can't even. Oh, this is all sewing related, though, um, like the waddling bird. So many cute, cute birds. Uh, oh, the peacock tail. Look at this tail. Look at that. Using the ruffles. <laughs> Anywho, if you love to sew and birds are your jam, this has been a really lovely book to look at. I, I, I highly recommend it. <laughs> and then the last book that goes along with my sustainability station is Reclaim Textiles, Techniques for Paper, Stitch, Plastic, and Mixed Media. A lot of really cool things. The cover of this book is actually feels like a cloth. It's really neat. And it has some really awesome projects in here and things that I'd never considered using. Um, they have like a tray cloth and then tech uh, stitching with garbage, I guess. It, all I could think of is Teresa going, inspired by garbage, inspired by garbage. Anyway, it's, it's a really neat book if you're into mixed media and using alternative materials. Obviously, a lot of the alternative materials are not archival safe, so I don't know if you'll want to put them with your needle art. But holiday displays maybe and then take your needle art off after and store separately. Anywho, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna insert the giveaway stuff now. Congratulations! Message me and you'll be able to get your PDF uh, digital download pattern of your choice. Awesome! Thank you all so much for coming back and joining me for my ninth floss tube video. I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. I apologize for being under the weather. I look forward to talking all things counted cross stitch and contemporary and traditional needle art next week. Stay tuned again. If you'd love to subscribe, like, or comment my channel, please do so below. My question for this week, if you'd like to enter a giveaway again for a digital download pattern, instant pattern, or if you don't if you don't want a digital download, if you want me to send you a, a physical paper copy of one of my designs, <laughs> comment below on um, what you're looking forward to this week. I'd love to hear what's going on in your week. I've loved all the comments. You are all such a joy and you bring me so much happiness. Thank you, be well, and let's talk next week.